tool setup video. Now for this video, I'm gonna assume that you already have map tool installed like I do here. I am using OS 10 and I expect a lot of you are Windows users, but I'm not gonna cover that because I'm gonna assume that you know how to do that. Now, the first thing that we wanna do when we start map tool is go up to the volume slider bar here. Oh, well, at least this is what I do anyway and set it to minimum like don't go all the way down to zero but to just above zero there because the sound effects can get pretty loud so uh, you know you don't need to have it that loud but that's as your preference whatever you want the next is to set up only three windows selection initiative and chat that's all you really need you can use map explorer if you don't know where you are on the map and we'll open up that with the window menu, go to Map Explorer and double click on your token and that will jump you to where your token is. If you know how to use Map Tool, then that's pretty self-explanatory. You've been doing that for years or however long you've been using Map Tool. But the next really important thing to talk about is memory. So let's go to our preferences, which I do by Map Tool preferences, but you'll probably have to go to Edit Preference if, if you're a Windows user and go to the Startup tab here. Now, if we start off here to the JVM memory settings, the maximum heat size, you wanna set this. Now, I know a lot of you, your eyes are bulging right now. 30 gigs allocated for a program, Starman? What are you talking about? That is insane. I only have eight gigs or 16 gigs, whatever. Let me explain how Java memory works. It's not actually gonna use that much. Oh, well, knock on wood, it's not gonna use that much. If you're importing PC tokens, from your D character builder D&D 4E files, it just might. The rule of thumb for importing is for each record it imports, maybe allocate a gig. That's a really, really rough rule of thumb. We'll talk about that more in the importing video, but it uses a lot of memory. I don't know why version 1.7 does this. Prior map tool versions, 1.6 and earlier, didn't use that much and i hope they fix this in 1.8 because this is crazy i don't know why it goes up that much while we're on the subject let's go down to the bottom right here and talk about the progress bar that you've got going here you can't really see the numbers right now because the progress bar is on top of them but there's a number on the left and a number on the right the number on the left is how much is currently being used and the number on the right is the maximum that'll go up to and that will get bumped up to 30 gigabytes pretty early in your import session. If you're just playing, then you don't need it to go that high. Uh, I, you can get away with like 12 gigs or whatever like that in your typical three, four hour session, whatever. What you're gonna be doing during that session, regardless of what you're doing, is every time you get the chance, double click down here on the progress bar and it will deallocate the memory and you won't get out of memory messages or errors or crashes because those are bad and um, we'll talk about that in a second next we'll go down to thread stack size and again this is going to look ridiculous for you windows users four megs for a stack size uh no that's going to give you stack overflow errors there starman uh no it won't give me overflow errors because i am using os 10 which is very good at managing memory windows not so much you're gonna to wanna to go at least, at least 12 megabytes for Windows. And even then, even then, I have seen guys get stack overflow errors. Some of my players have gotten them. And even on some of my really more complicated macros, I've gotten stack overflow. But you want that as low as possible. For, so start off with 12 and maybe go up two megabytes at a time and you have to restart map tool every time you do that, of course, it'll give you the message to do that. But you want that as low as possible without getting stack overflow messages and 12 is a good one to start at. Value, sounds, we talked about that earlier, put the volume slider down and I keep these two checked myself because I like sound effects. Um, a lot of my players don't, uh, which is kind of disappointing because I worked hard <laughs> to put the sound effects in, but you know, it's an individual preference. We'll talk about more how to suppress sounds in the toggles video, so watch out for that. Application is next. Going from right to left, this is important. Campaign autosave every five minutes. So if you are doing a really long import and it crashes, you get an out of memory message because while it's running, you can't double click on the progress bar like I was mentioning before. So it might crash. 
So what you'll want to do is stop map tool, which well, it'll get stopped for you, of course, by the crash, and then start it again. Then it'll ask you if you want to reload the campaign file. You say yes, and you're golden. You're ready to go. The rest of this stuff here, uh, hmm. yeah, you don't really need a lot of this stuff. I don't bother with it anyway. You can experiment as you see fit. Um, you might need to use UPnP because the networking can get a little hairy with map tool, as you may know. Accessibility, font size, you can set that higher if you want because I use a very high resolution and it may be difficult to see the text. So put that up if you want. And interactions, I don't really use any of this stuff here. Again, you can set it to your own individual preference, but movement metric, that is not a preference. You have to set it to 111. Otherwise, things are not going to work properly. I've coded around this movement metric so it'll actually give you an error if you try to use anything else i believe if it doesn't i'm going to code it so it does so yeah you have to have that and kind of on that slant let's say okay here because we're done there we can start about uh, or rather talk about starting a server so the way we do that is we um first disconnect from a server if we've already running that because i had mine running and uh, we'll say yes we want to disconnect and this is how you start a server you go to file start server and this dialog here comes up and uh, use PNP if you want to we keep it unchecked because I manually configure the port forwarding on my router at my admin page and you can set up all this stuff I keep all these checked except for players receive campaign macros because I don't use those. Once again, movement metric, 111, very important. Set that if you are the GM and you're running a server. And of course, you know how to set these other things too. If you don't, go. there are plenty of map tool videos on YouTube. They're very good. Look at those and of course, read the documentation on the website on how to set up map tool and you should be good. There's not really a whole lot else to talk about. I wouldn't put these windows anywhere over here because it'll block the pop-up status little window that comes up. This is called the stat sheet that pops up here. Leave them on the right here and uh, you can dock them different ways you want. I actually find the docking behavior a little irritating in map tool, but you can reset that if you want to. And I like setting AI too. And uh, just so the, the tokens don't go over blocked off areas of BBLs and all that good stuff. And that's about it on how to set up map tool. Again, very important. Double click the progress bar. See how it goes down on the memory. Do that while you're playing. Do it every, I don't know, half hour or so. It depends on how many macros that you're running and how the memory gets ramped up there. So that's very important. So remember to could keep continuing to do that otherwise you could run into trouble and that's it that's how to set up map tool and from here on out we will just talk about the macro police box and how to run it thanks for watching